Comics are about entertainment, right? Big, bold, amazing moments, huge action, uh, deep levels of drama, uh, character development that you just can't see anywhere else. And I mean, it's it's you build with your imagination. I mean, even even cartoons, certainly Hollywood movies, can't do what can be done on a comic page for the price and the speed. So why is it that what happens outside of comics is suddenly more entertaining than what's going on in the actual comics? It, how could this be? Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, now you guys might think you know where I'm going with this, and and uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, it, this isn't an example to to you know dip the toe back into the comic internet drama wars. It's it's really taking it a a few steps backward. It's asking a simple question, uh, which I think all of us would probably like to know the answer to, and that's why is it with comics being as as omnipresent as big as they've ever been. And what I mean by that is, you know, you, you have tons of comics being produced. You have big billion dollar blockbuster films. Um, yes, we are living in the time of the virus. So you do not have a comic shop to open up. But but very, very shortly, uh, comics will be slowly returning back to normal. You've got crossovers. You've got events happening that, you know, if you grew up and you're reading comics in the in the 80s, you know, there are lots of storylines you might have had in your head. You might lots of kind of fan fiction ideas that you knew would never come to the light of day because, you know, Marvel and DC would never do these kinds of crazy things. But today, these crazy things can happen all the time. Do you want to see, you know, Mike Del Mundo draw the Avengers? Yep. Do you want to see Jane Foster as Thor for an extended period of time? Sure. Why not? Do you want to see uh, Batman with lots of Robins, including his, his own son? You can have that, too. You can have anything. Do you want to see the villains win and a new Legion of Doom take over the entire planet and Batman ride a dinosaur? It's all there for you. So why is it with all of the toys at our disposal, all the different comics? And by the way, I, I, I went hit Marvel and DC. How dare I? How dare you? Um, what about all the independent comics? What if you never liked Kate books? What if you never liked Superman, Batman and all that stuff? And you really wanted to get different types of stories. Maybe you wanted a coming of age story. Maybe you wanted a, a new type of Star Wars. Maybe you wanted a zombie apocalypse tale. Maybe you wanted a, a story of, 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 of anything. Anything is possible. I mean, hell, over in uh, Vault, you've got Tim Seeley doing a group out investigating space by filming porn with the aliens they meet. Uh, it's all here. So why is it with all of that here? Do we have uh, such a desire? Why is it that so much of the conversation is not about comics, but rather about drama? Why is it about what a creator is up to? Why is it about the various shenanigans of uh, Mark Wade or uh, Ethan Van Skyver or Robert, Robbie Rodriguez? Not Robert Rodriguez. That's a whole different thing. That'd be a whole different level of drama. But Robbie Rodriguez. Anyway, why is it? Why why are people interested in C.B. Sobolski's food eating habits? What Dan Didio thinks of marriage? Uh, if you know Joe Casada is actually paying attention to the comics that he's editing, uh, why why is it that that those stories that drama is so is so what what gets the attention? Um, if you go on, you know, if you, if you go to Bleeding Cool, you'll see the stories that lead are not about the comics. They're about the creators, the people behind the comics, the dramas of the people behind the comics. How many hours and thousands of hours of videos have been made on Mark Wade and a you know relatively unknown uh, Richard Meyer? Uh, why is that? Why is that entertaining to anyone? When you have all of this, you know, comics can be whatever they want. So why are we? Why are we back to drama? It's, it's a solid question, and it, it indicates if, if you're in a comic company and you're a publisher and editor-in-chief, you're somebody who's, who's managing your line, I think you have to ask yourself that question. Why is it? Why is it that when you go on social media, why are the big hit counts for videos? Why is the attention focused on controversy and behind-the-scenes stuff as opposed to what you're putting out? Now, I'm being a little, a little extreme here because the reality is what we see on Twitter is still not the world that's consumed in a comic shop. But at the same time, digital 
and social media go hand in hand. And the, this is the new frontier of comics. Like I mentioned in another video, social media is going to be a leading marketing driver, if not the marketing driver of comics. If not now, very shortly. And, and frankly, probably now. You've got word of mouth kind of habits and social media as the drivers behind the marketing. Digital is going to happen. And when it happens, the ability to quickly share comics, the ability to uh, to post a link somewhere of a comic to read, about, the ability to share something with a friend. I just read this comic. You should read it, too. That's going to be one of the major vehicles behind which comics are sold. So because of that, we're stuck with the digital world. And from time to time, I hear comments made of, well, that's just Internet drama or that's just people on the Internet. It's not that's not how most comics are bought. And you're correct. If you go into a comic shop, most people buying comics are not engaging at the same level of people as uh, on Twitter. They think they do. But it's growing. And the future, you know, inexorably links these two things together. You're not going to be able to have one without the other. So it's, it should be the canary in the coal mine to a lot of big companies that their efforts, what's being talked about on digital, on this new platform, on this new world that they're trying to light up, are nine times out of ten, maybe it's a little exaggerated, but often the drama, the battles, the, the hijinks of what somebody's doing on YouTube, a live stream that went you know, astray, a creator that said something crazy and people are you know, battling back and forth as to if creators should be able to say crazy things or not. This, this is what people are talking about. And so if you think about you're an editor and you're curating, say, death metal, you're going to spend a lot of money marketing this thing. You're putting a big bet of the company's whole lineup and future and creative vision on this series. It's not a multi-million dollar decision in terms of outlay of cash, but it absolutely is a you know, potentially hundred million dollar plus decision based on opportunity. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, this, this story, if it does well, is going to propel DC to new heights. It's going to create IP for them to turn into to movies and games and whoever knows what. It's also a way that they're, I mean, they're, they're tying up two of their big creators. They, they could just say, hey, okay, Scott Snyder, and Capullo, Greg Capullo, we're going to put you back on Batman. The Tom King runs over. We're going to put you back on there. And you're just going to do the greatest hits of Batman for the next five years. We're going to triple your salary. They may go, well, you know, creatively, that doesn't sound that exciting to us. And DC could say, well, how does it sound if uh, if you're making five times what you were making? How does that how does that sound creatively? Chance, you know, so that probably sounds pretty good. This is uh, that's what DC could do, and they could just churn out like the greatest hits of Batman for the next five years to try and be this kind of Time Warner venture that they're going on with with AT and T. But they're not; they're putting this bet on death metal. And so, if you're in the you know if you're in the management, if you're in this this world, um, you should be able to look at things and say, all right, the return on investment I should receive should be. Heavy attention, strong social media presence, lots of uh, referrals, lots of lots of likes, and I should have a well orchestrated campaign, especially if we're going to do more and more stuff with digital. This is what I should expect. But if you go online and you see uh, that a bunch of people are talking about, you know, some some guy trademarking a name and another guy digging up pornography in his past and posting that, and then half the people say that's gross and half the people say it's fair game. If you're a comic publisher and you're looking at that. You got to be alarmed that the the headlines are being dominated by it. If you go to Bleeding Cool and you see that people are discussing Dan Didio, Joe Casada drinking and kind of chatting it up as your number one story, or you know what Steve Jeppy is doing over at Diamond as kind of what people are most interested in, that's got to be alarming when you're putting out news about hey we've got you know over here we got. Mark Wade, Neil Adams, you know, uniting to do a Fantastic Four story. You got Peter David, Dale Keown. We've got Tin of Swords. We've got Death Metal. We've got, you know, some new Leviathan series. We've got all this stuff kind of all teed up. If you're working hard on those elements for comics and you're getting the oxygen taken out of the room by, you know, forgive me, however you, you decide on it, silliness, um, you've got a major problem. And I think comics do have a major problem. There's, there is a problem when you can tell these bigger than life stories, you're getting some classic creators reunited and the attention online is going to this other stuff.
Now, again, I'll, I'll loop back very just just for sake of argument. Somebody will bring it up. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily represent real life. You're right. I'm not saying it is. It doesn't represent real life in the comic shop. It doesn't re- re- uh, represent how people are viewing comics who are maybe actually buying all of them. But it is the future. You know, I, I'm not trying to convince you of two things at once. Digital does have a big play. Social media marketing and sharing does have a big part of our comic book future. So these questions need to be asked. How do the comics and the actual content within the comics become the primary focus that people are worried about? Not all the silliness. That's not for, by the way, for you and me, unless you happen to be a, uh, a publisher listening to this or maybe a creator who's starting your own venture. It's not a problem for you and me to solve. But it definitely is a problem for comic companies to solve. It's why they're in business, and they have to take this very seriously. It's a threat. There's a, there's a danger here if they don't get their arms around it. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think all this is strange? I do think it is very, very strange. <sighs> all right. Hey, uh, let me know your thoughts below in the comments. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notification if you feel like it. Facebook, Twitter are at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening. 